write that down. Sans Phil Mackey, though, but Mackey and Judd, write that down edition. It still lives on Judd Zolgad. We got our guy Michael in the house here. He's about to make our predictions. Michael, as I was navigating through my amazing technical difficulties, I forgot to give you the spiel on how write that down works, obviously, in the green room, but I know you're a loyal listener of Mackey and Judd, so I'm guessing you kind of know the protocol, right? Three predictions yep. each, show-related, Minnesota sports-related. Um, excited to get you on here. But in the meantime, I'm just going to have you pop off the screens. We run through an accountability session, look at statistics. I'll get you right back on here, and we'll get ready to roll, okay? Sounds great. Thanks. All right, man. Michael in the house from Iowa, right, Judd? You guys were talking off Mike. Hawkeye Indeed fan? he is. Hawkeye fan? He I is. got Hawkeyes or Cyclones? Hawk, Hawkeye fan. Oh, okay, Hawkeye fan. But also a Vikings fan, so, so it offsets. Sure. Okay. All it right. Offsets well, write that bit. down. We know how it works, mm -hmm. right, Chad? Three predictions, everyone, each week. We keep track of batting averages and home runs. Listeners, if you want to participate, please send us a message through the Score North app. So let's run through our accountability session. Judd Zolgad, a couple things off the board. You said Mike Zimmer will be a DC in the NFL next season in 2022. I did indeed, oh. and I was wrong. But look at the next one. Nice little hit here. You said the Twins uh -huh. will score seven or fewer runs against the Tigers for one of the more all-time bunts from Judd Zolgat. I don't want to hear well, any Phil, more bunts from me, okay? No, Phil predicted nine or plus runs. I think it was like in the it was like in that night's game. So I think it was Wednesday's game that he predicted nine or more runs. And I thought to myself, they ain't scoring not with this offense of late. So I did bunt, but you know what I did? I bunted against the shift. Oh, Very wow. savvy. That is savvy. So I get okay. so I got the point. All right, I'll give you the savviness. I'll give you the savviness. Mackie, one uh -huh, thing on the board, because yeah, uh, this was Judd's counter prediction. Uh, Mackie said the Twins will score at least nine runs against the Tigers on Wednesday. They uh, was it exact? Was it six? I believe was that the exact total? Yeah, I think it was six. I think it was six too. I think so I got very six fortunate. runs for the Tigers uh, in that fold. Uh, listeners had nothing come off the Whoa. board. Whoa! So a quiet really? week for our listeners, Judd. And uh, old Dex tweets uh, just one thing off the board here. He said the Wild would acquire an established NHL player between now and next week's Write That Down. We are recording this, by the way, on Tuesday evening for Wednesday, but that's still in the parameters. That's in the phrasing of next week's Write That Down session. Sometimes we record those earlier, Judd. So if a player signs on Wednesday, I do not get this point. So I'm sure the Write That Down gods will strike me hard, uh, obviously, when Wednesday happens and they do sign someone, right? I will give you I will give you $50 if before noon tomorrow the, the Wild, that Billy Garen signs or acquires a guy with minimum 200 games experience i will give you 50 dollars because it oh, ain't wow. happening well wow. okay i'm gonna hold you to that that's a lot of good uh, you should hold me to end. it um i got a season ticket plan i gotta figure cold, out if i can renew cold hard so. cash yeah, yeah get that I renewed like that. Get, get that, that renewed would you please we'll, we'll see if i do we'll see if i do statistics right. on the season uh i'm still batting 44 with the league leading 13 home runs house money right now if you're if you're me I'm just playing with house money here. So I'm I'm sitting pretty. Uh, Famous last words. Judd Zogat, 368, seven home runs. Phil Mackey with a 303 average, nine bombs. The listeners with double-digit home runs, they have 10, and they're hitting exactly 300. I think we talked about this last weekend, Judd. Cumulative-wise, between the show and the listeners, this is the hottest start and the best stretch of Write That Down's history so far. You know, I'm trying to think back because there was a year where we all were pretty good. But yeah, I think the list, I don't know the listeners have ever been this high this late. They, yeah. They've definitely hit, hit for power, but their approach so much is to try to hit for power that it ordinarily means their average suffers. So this might be the latest in the season that the listeners have been 300. That makes sense. Uh, all time, Judd Zolgad leading with 235 career hits, 22 bombs. Phil Mackey, 192 hits, 24 bombs. The listeners do lead uh, the all-time home run race. No uh, debate here between 61 and 73. Listeners have 29 bombs, no asterisks, 159 hits. And then uh, myself, Declan Goff, 131 hits with 21 home runs. But closing in on you, Judd, for all-time leads of uh, of home runs. And I've only been doing this for half the time. Yep. So Yep, I am not. You know what? Uh-uh, I spray the ball. I spray the ball around. I beat the shift. Occasionally, oh, wow. I homer, but I am a man that goes after hits. I am Gwyn. I am Carew. I am All George right. Brett. Home runs follow sometimes, but they're not what I base my bread and butter of. Write that down on. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's get to it. Let's get our let's get our guy Michael in here. Let's Michael do this. patiently waiting as uh, he has dealt you with have to wait that difficulties. Long. He was waiting wait out in the green room. Michael, what's up, man? Thank you for coming on, Mackie and Judd. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's great. So, how long have you been uh, listening? 
to Mackie and Judd and Score North? Uh, I'd say about two years I've been listening. So uh, it's great content. Love it. A little more, you know, a little heavy on the Vikings. That's what I follow more than anything else. But uh, good content. It's good stuff. So, so are are you a, a Vikings fan and Hawks fan equally? Are you more of a Vikings fan? Who, who's your ultimate football team? Uh, Judd, I got to be honest with you. I probably lean heavier towards the Hawks. Uh, Vikings, Vikings continue to, you know, go back and forth with me, but I'm always there. I continue, continue to ride the wagon with those guys. So, Nate Stanley, yeah, did he get screwed or was he just not good? Not good enough. I okay. was surprised he's drafted, but so know. was Phil. Phil good spent a week bashing him. <laughs> Good arm, but couldn't do much else. You know, not very accurate, no mobility. So, <laughs> Michael, I have, like, I have next to like no stake in college football. I went to a D two school in Central Minnesota. So I and I and I unfortunately was growing up during the Gopher end of Glenn Mason years, Tim Brewster beginning years. So there wasn't a lot for me to root for. So I when when people say we hate Iowa, I I have nothing against Iowa. I just want to make that very clear to Michael here. I don't hate Iowa. I'm all good. I'm all good there. That's good. Listen, I don't hate Minnesota either. I, I think I hate Wisconsin, but I don't we can hate all Minnesota. Agree on that. We can all agree yeah. on that, right? Yeah. That Very is, solid. We all can agree that Wisconsin stinks. We can all agree yep. on that one. I like that. For sure. Absolutely. Michael, you're going to start us off here. So we're going to lead off to Michael. We're going to go to Judd, then to me, and then Phil Mackey via satellite. So, Michael, you're our leadoff hitter here, man. Lead us off. Perfect, guys. Well, I think I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do heavy on Vikings. So I'm still a little... I'm a little irritated with Quasi over the draft yet. So, uh, you know, I thought that when Georgia and Alabama played twice, there was one standout person on the field who played for Alabama against five first round defensive draft picks that were on Georgia's team. Mm -hmm. That's my man, Jamison Williams, who was staring us right in the face at number 12. Then we decided to trade down 20 picks without getting the Lions first round pick, which was completely ridiculous. So write this down. I think Jamison Williams in one of the two games that we play the Lions goes for 100 yards and a touchdown. Two-leg parlay. So 100 a yards and a touchdown in one of those two games, right? That's what you're saying? Correct. Okay. All right. All right. I, like I think you might be right. Yep. And that trade will always frustrate me. That trade will always – because scene might be good, but in the division to drop down that much to allow them to pick up a, a potential premium skill position player, unless he's a bust, I just don't like it. I, I thought he was the best player on the field when Georgia and Alabama played. Great game. Who knows? Yeah, you might be right. All right. Uh, my first write that down is a Twins-related baseball Miguel Sano's next stop, next stop, Declan, so I'm being very careful here, okay. will be in the Kansas City Royals organization. The way I see it, Sano is the perfect Royal or Pirate. I can't decide which one, <laughs> but he hits the crap out of the ball in KC. Like he, does. Like he is, he's been a ridiculously um, effective, especially not surprisingly with the power, in Kansas City and Kaufman. So Miguel Sano's next stop will be in the Royals organization. So if he never plays a game for them, but but he is signed and ends up right. at their AAA affiliate in Omaha, this counts. Thank you very much. Okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah, Comerica makes a lot. Or not Comerica. Yeah. Um, where did Kansas City Royals? Kaufman play. Yeah, Kaufman. he destroys baseballs he, there. It's probably not a short exactly. Exactly. I'll keep the uh, Twins train going with Judd here. So write this down. The Twins will win at least four of their six games against Los Angeles teams. So they have two against the Dodgers. We're recording this, by the way, on a Tuesday night. So the, the game against the first game against the Dodgers has not happened yet, but they have six games, two against the Dodgers. Uh, what is it? Three. Let me actually, let me make sure that it's three and not four. I don't want to get bird on phrasing here. Now that it's now, three. Now I'm having, now I have, Oh, it's three. Okay. They're off on Thursday. So they have five games. Uh -huh. against the Dodgers and and yes. uh and Angels. So actually let me let me uh you know screw it. I'll say this. Going four to five. Going four wow. to five. Going four to five against the against LA teams. Oh, right somebody somebody got some drinks. <laughs> somebody got five. some surly. That's a home run. I'm saying four to five. That's it's a, a, home a run. yes it's a home run. It's, it's a grand slam home run. 
I told you house money. I'm with house money right here. This is fine. I'm doing all right. You know what? That's what I thought. Last year, gigantic lead. Swamp. Almost blew the whole lead. So that's okay. All right. You enjoy your 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 uh, hot run here. All right, let's go to Mackie for his first prediction via satellite. Right, prediction number one here from uh, old Magadak. He's drinking some Twins Kool-Aid after the Rocco Baldelli epic meltdown on Sunday. And he's swinging for the fences. Because write this down. The Minnesota Twins will sweep the Dodgers. Get the brooms out. The sweep will happen in Los Angeles. The Twins will sweep the Dodgers. Woohoo! Speaking of drinks flowing. Is two games a sweep? Yeah, it counts. Does two That's games a make a sweep? It does. It's technically a sweep. I've always he's considered saying, a sweep to be three, three sure. or more. But he's saying they're going to beat. They're going to beat. So he's saying they're they're going to beat the Dodgers back to back. You guys are seriously win. crazy. Yeah. I would not be putting my hard earned, write that down predictions on that one. Yeah, the Dodgers are playing incredible baseball right now. Yeah, you, the same guy who predicted the Tigers he wouldn't score seven runs or fewer against. The yeah, Tigers. you know why? Because I took the shift and I bunted. Oh, That's okay. what you should do. Right. Phil is swing. You know what? Phil is Joey Gallo. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. He's Sano, swinging from his heels. Now, right Joey Gallo doesn't acknowledge like Martin Perez. He's still dominating for Texas, but uh, that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, Michael, your second prediction. All right, guys. So I'm going back to the Vikings. So, uh, you know, as you like to talk about old Kirky boy, uh, which I disagreed re signing him, but so be it. We'll live with it. So I think <laughs> KLC will, uh, you know, quiet Kirk's mind, as he said. So, and I also think he's going to push him to make some chances. So I think Kirk. Got a two-leg parlay here. So I think Kirk sets uh, a new career record or stat with interceptions. I think he has 14 or more interceptions this year. And also, to quiet his mind, I think Kirk takes every snap under center instead of lining up under right guard or left guard or right tackle. So shotgun still ca- – so so he just won't actually accidentally get below the right guard and think the football's there. He won't – Get into the 49ers game like last year and think the football's under right guard. So hard to quantify, but I want to make sure that we know that KOC is quite in his mind so Kirk knows where to line up. So, and, so you know, Michael, are you also yeah. saying too that he's 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 not gonna mess up? He's not gonna he's not gonna be behind the right player, and, and or are you saying that he won't miss any other snap? Like regardless, he's the starting quarterback. No other quarterback takes a snap for the Vikings in 2022. I'm just saying he won't mess up the snaps where he's yeah. in. So I like it. Do you know what? I've th- thought about this a bit. I don't think Kirk lining up under right guard in a real game probably got an- enough run and attention. If 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 that is Kirk Cousins, the New York Jet, right? It oh, might not God. be the butt fumble, but it gets a lot of attention. Like they'd still be showing it, right? It was a huge game, fourth quarter, right? I mean, I think there was under seven minutes left in that game, and we're at the ten yard line. It, yes, it, it, that's who Kirk is. But so be it. We got him back again, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> KLC will quiet his mind. He'll be great. So we'll bring. <laughs> He'll good. be a pro bowler. All right. Um, I, I'm going to stay in the world of the National Football League here. Write this down. Mike Zimmer will be on the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff in 2023. So a season from now, Zimmer will be, and I'm not going to make a prediction because he's old enough where I could see him being like a defensive consultant type of guy. Right. So I'm not going to say that he is going to be the Dallas Cowboys um, D coordinator with Sean Payton as head coach. So the simple prediction is this. Mike Zimmer will be on the Cowboys coaching staff in 23. Okay. I like it. I like it. We talked about that too on Purple Daily too. I said that. that. Yep. I was more specific back then, um, but I've got some concerns. At Mike's age, I could see Mike taking a job, but but saying, you know what, I don't I don't want to coordinate the entire thing. I'll just contribute ideas. So I'm gonna back off a little bit from my purple daily stance. Okay, I like it. Uh, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna get this prediction out there now because with Phil Mackey via satellite, I've actually not listened to these predictions. So if he has like swear words and bombs dropped in them to sabotage his job and my job, we're now both on the line. Uh, so I don't know what he has said yet on this, but uh, uh, Mackie and I interviewed Chris Jericho, wrestling star, AEW star. Actually, my first press pass credential of all of 2022, isn't that a Twins game? Uh, it's going to be at AEW Dynamite this Wednesday night at Target Center. Got a credential, Judd. For what? For a wrestling promo. 
for for AEW Quake at the Lake. But I mean, are you just go, going to watch? Are you going to work it? Well, yeah. So they don't. They usually do like press conference scrums with their wrestlers. They don't do that for house taping shows. But I am covering it for Score North. I'm, I'm going. I have a press badge. I'm going to go there. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to report back. Maybe some feedback. I look forward Friday. to your high qu- quality yes. journalistic work on finding yes. out what what wrestling hey. is really all about. Hey, maybe some videos. Can you post those for me, Jeff? Could you? Uh, could you also get those? Down? No, oh, no, I won't no. be posting those. It doesn't work both ways like that, Declan. <laughs> All right. Write I send them down. to you. I don't, I don't get them. AJ Fredrickson, stand by, stand by for that. Write this down. Uh, Chris Jericho will beat John Moxley at quick at the lake for the AW interim title. So there's a, there's a title match. Judd. The, the interim title is on the line between Chris Jericho and John Moxley. And I think Jericho takes the belt off of John Moxley for a big pop at target center. So write that down. All right. Can't wait for your wrestling takes after uh, quick at the lake. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to have awesome. too many. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. Uh, Phil Mackey for his second prediction. Okay, prediction number two. So the NBA schedule is supposed to come out here anytime, like I think this week or maybe early next week. So I'm trying to sneak this in under the the radar, the deadline. Write this down. The Minnesota Timberwolves will be scheduled to play a Christmas Day game. Intriguing trade made this offseason. A team on the rise. Anthony Edwards, a young superstar. So the Timberwolves will be scheduled to play a Christmas Day game. Write it down. I like it. I like it. I mean, the NBA is just the king on Christmas. I know the NFL is on it, but there's what now? You guys five games? I think there's five think so. games. Yeah, on, there's like a whole on slot. Christmas, which is ridiculous. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually get a Christmas Day home game this time. Hey, around. I'd like that. And and by the way, though, the problem is this. I, I think it, it was in the last two years or so. The National Football League has gotten smart and said we're going to play on Christmas yeah. Day too. Which made me say, what NBA games? Because then I just watch football. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm excited to see if that happens. Go go Wolves. Schedule's coming out soon. Uh, Flagrant House, too. Cheap plug. Kyle, uh, Phil Mackey, Kyle Teague. They uh, are rocking Flagrant House. Go check it out. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, Michael, your third and final prediction here on Write That Down. All right, guys. So, again, Vikings here. So, uh, Jefferson entering his third year here in the NFL. I think there's two records he has within sight to break after his third year. I think the receiving yards that Randy Moss has after three yards or after three years is there. And Michael Thomas's record for most receptions after three years is in play here. So Jefferson needs 1,148 yards to break Randy Moss's record for most yards after three years. And he needs 126 receptions to break Michael Thomas's record for receptions after three years. Write this down. Jefferson will go for at least 1,500 yards receiving and 126 receptions this year. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Big year. You know what? I think you might be right. Mm -hmm. I think you might be right. Everything I've seen in camp is incredible. This guy, we are watching... Not a a just a star here. I think we are watching a special player. I really do. I don't know he's Moss because Moss changed the sport itself. Um, but he's a special player. I could easily see. I think if Kirk, so if your point about Kirk is correct, like if KOC gets to Kirk and is like morphs Kirk into who he thinks Kirk can and should be, I think your Jefferson prediction might come true. Like he's that good. God, he's fun to watch. Yeah. He is. He's great. He's uh, Michael, any uh, shout outs you want to give here? You have this life changing platform on Write That Down and Mackie and Judd. Who do you want to shout out? Yeah, real quick. Thanks, guys. So, a uh, few guys at work from the Northwest Corner uh, Casey, he's a Vikings fan. A couple other guys are Packers fans. I'm not going to name their names since they are Packers yeah. fans, but they know who they are. Uh, my brother Dustin, loyal Vikings fan, and our buddy Shay, he always keeps it real. Keeps the expectations with the Vikings good. Last but not least, my wife, Ann, my daughter, Tristan, and my son, Johnny. They've all hopped on this Vikings bandwagon with me and are along for the ride. So, and thank what, you, guys. What have you done? What have That poor family doesn't deserve the, the heartaches that, that that team continually puts its fan base through. What have you done? I've been asking myself that too. Yeah. But <laughs> every time a field goal goes wide, you're like, yeah. sorry about that. My bad. Yeah, they're still there. So they love it. So we're All we're right. long for the ride. Thanks, guys. Awesome, man. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate you coming on, man. We'll get you on yeah, again, okay? You. Yeah. Talk to you.
Wow. Great prediction there from Michael. Great predictions. All right. Tony. I think Jefferson thing, I, I I could see it. It sounds it sounds absurd, but I could see it, man. I could see it. Every time I watch him, he is special. He is special. He is why, you know what, Declan? He is why I am so often critical of athletes and teams mm-hmm. because I think our our uh want to to declare like star players or my team's great, it's so often so far fetched, right? Yeah. Like greatness comes along rarely. And so what, what makes Jefferson so unbelievable to me is he is great. So like, like this is the type of guy, this is why when, when we all go gaga about, um, I don't know, take your pick Thielen, who I like good player, right? When we all go gaga about Adam Thielen's unbelievable, blah, blah. No, he's good. And he's, a, and that's awesome. But, like when we're trying to torture the oh man no he's one of the best in the league he's top five or, well first of all no he's not second of all a guy like Jefferson comes a- along and acknowledging and seeing how special that guy is is why I don't get caught up in a lot of players because you only see players like Jefferson or or in the North Stars case before they left Madano or Kaprizov right. Like, for all that we wanted to be like, well, oh, Koivu, look at Koivu, he's the captain of stuff. And, you know, oh, Parisi. They were good players. They worked their butts off. That's awesome. Um, Kaprizov's greatness, though. And and so I can't fall into the trap of like, well, my, you know, the guy I watch, he's still pretty, really good. Well, no, he might be just fine. But when you, when the rare, when the rare player, and, and I think it's why, in particular, this show has been hard on cat decks. Because when, when you look at Cat, he has the ability to be great, right? Mm-hmm. But he doesn't always use it. And that's what drives you crazy. Because you're like, dude, there is something to unlock here every single game and certainly in playoffs. So that is why I am so tough on teams and players. Because every once in a while, you get somebody who's special. And those are the people who should be celebrated. Speaking of being special, Judd, and speaking of being a family affair, it sounds like everyone is uh, on the Livia program in that Zolgad household. So why don't you uh, tell everyone how everyone can uh, join the Zolgads in their li- in their journey to weight loss? That's exactly right. We we all are, and as I've talked about for a long time now, thanks to my friends, I am down forty pounds. And here's the most important part: I'm keeping the weight off. Dawn, she looked at me and it's like, Judd, you have lost all this weight. I'd like to drop some weight too. I said you should join as well. She did exactly that. She's down now about fourteen pounds. So. The Zolgat household now down 50 plus pounds. And here's the best part and the most important part, keeping the weight off. It's now Livia's exclusive end of summer anniversary offer. And right now you can join the program for 50% off. That's right, 50% off. So as we get into fall, how about if all of those fall and winter clothes in your closet right now that might not fit? And look, that was the case with me, but they start to fit. And do you know how good it feels? And again, you can keep the weight off, and that's the most important thing. It's this simple. Call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A or visit Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. Join the program now for 50% off. Livia.com is how you start a weight loss journey that I can tell you from personal experience is incredibly fulfilling. All right, Chad, one more trip around the room, your third and final prediction. Okay, my third and final prediction is Kirill Kaprizov, who I just brought up, will score two goals or more in the Wilds' regular season opener on October 13th. I believe it's against the Rangers at the X. But Kirill Kaprizov, now free of all concern about can he get out of Russia, blah, blah, blah. He's back here uh, in the States and in this state in particular, which is the most important thing. Kirill Kaprizov, two goals or more. Potentially a hat trick, Declan, mm-hmm. in the Wilds' regular season opener. All right, I like it. I'll, I have a wild prediction here, too, to round things out. Uh, we talked about this in the latest Judd's Hockey Show, and for those who are probably wondering, where, where's Judd's Hockey Show? Well, you know, it's been a little quiet, okay? Where the, It's the summer months, and we got some things in, in the works here. Uh, God willing, Judd will get a press credential. I just got a note from Aaron Sickman asking, hey, does, Declan, are these people still working for Score North? Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff said, yes, Mr. Sickman. They are still working for. Score I said in my credential two weeks so, ago. So no, I'm, 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 hey, he would, and he was just making sure that you were still employed. You know, he doesn't. Old Judster up to his tricks here. I'm just, he's just making sure you don't want people no. using press credentials. I'll, okay? I'll so, check with my people. Okay, we'll do. Uh, my my third and final prediction, Judd. Write this down. Wild hockey one related. The Minnesota Wild will sign Paul Stastny. Write it down. So Paul Stastny still remains like a free agent. 
37 yes, years old, uh, still chasing a cup, still a productive player in Winnipeg last year. In fact, I saw someone project he will probably sign a one-year deal between $1.75 and $2.5 million. And the Wild have about three to four in space right now. So you know what? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. And you know, and you know what Paul Stastny is, Judd? I without without doing any actual vetting, Stastny screams a Bill Guerin guy. Doesn't he not? Like a veteran who has been through locker rooms yeah. and been to playoffs and knows what it takes to win. Um, wouldn't shock me at all if, if as as the offseason kind of treads on a little bit, Paul Stastny's wearing a wild sweater by opening night. I like that one. Yeah. How is the guy from the Penguins still out there? Yeah, Evan Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. I How is him. he still out there? In a perfect I world, I would take him. I think he just turned 29. Yeah. He, he had a great year. As far year. as I recall, unless I unless I missed this, he had a really good 2021, 22. I am absolutely shocked. And someone's gonna get a bargain there now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, he's been uh he's been really, really solid. So I don't know. I why. would take him in a heartbeat. I'd absolutely. say, listen, dude, come here. Do it again, and then walk and sign for three to five years, right? Right. No, that one good. really gets me. I, I really like that one. Him. All right, Phil Mackey's third and final prediction here to end. Write that down. Third and final prediction presented by my friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been around for over 100 years, helping businesses maximize their level of success through risk management tools and resources. If you go to their website, federatedinsurance.com, you can find a full list of industries Federated protects. Federatedinsurance.com. Okay, third and final prediction here. So um, I think we're three weeks away from the Gopher football opener against New Mexico State. Jerry kills New Mexico State squad. And right now, the spread on that game is 37 and a half points. The Gophers are 37 and a half point favorites. Write this down. Jerry kills New Mexico State squad. They will get their revenge on behalf of Jerry. Not by winning. They'll cover the spread. Jerry Kill will cover the spread. And I'm going to lock it in here at 37 and a half decks. So I'm getting in early on that price. Write it down. All right. They'll, they'll cover they'll cover a 37 and a half okay. point spread. Okay. You ripped me last yeah, week. Yeah, that's that's bad. For my seven run that's thing, bad. right? That's and bad. I get the rips. I get the rips. 37 and a half, they'll cover the spread. Yeah, that's wow. that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. That is another bunt against the shift wow. if I've seen one. By the way, what Phil did there during his predictions, in my opinion, is one of the most uncomfortable things possible. Leaning against the hotel headboard. Oh, you don't like that? It's not comfortable. Well, maybe that one is. You don't know that. But your neck, no, it's because it's it's not soft. And your neck's sort of like up ah. against that thing. All right. Yeah. I just, I don't think that's comfortable at all. I, I think that's a mistake on Phil's Vinny's part. on the bed here. Vinny's got it made. That's that's where you'd like to be. You'd like to be on the bed. He's going from the dog bed to his own bed to the human bed. Vinny goes to the door. Gets, much like Stella, gets treated very well. Yeah. Yeah. He does. These, these dogs have the life. They really do. It's the key. It's the key to finding parents who don't yet have kids, or in my dogs. case, are never going to. Get so dogs. you treat your dog like your kid. It's very get pathetic dogs. and not going to change. All right, that's write that down predictions. If you want to get in, uh, I th we're booked through the end of August, and as I look through my spreadsheet here, we do have some openings on this show starting in mid September. So shoot me an email. Um, it's VikingsVentLine at gmail dot com. You can go to the feedback tab too on the Score North app. Tweet me, DM me. I see all those. Uh, get on the. You can get on an episode here of. Mackie and Judd write that down. Judd Zolga and myself also over on Purple Daily with Phil Mackie and that version of Write That Down. You can find that on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. We'll be back on Thursday.